everybody. So we are going to be continuing the trend that I started last summer, which is reviewing books from the knowledge graph and semantics space. And the reason I do this is because so many of you ask me what books I would recommend if you are just getting started or if you want to learn more information about semantics. So that is what we're going to be doing for the whole month of June this year. And today we are going to be reviewing that book and with all of these reviews, I always give away my review copy uh, to someone in the audience. So if you are interested in that, make sure you check the description down below for more details. All right, so with that, let's go get started. Uh, so my name is Paula Land. Um, I am a uh, content strategist. I um, have been working for many years in this field um, as a consultant um, and, and uh, in-house to some extent, but currently um, consulting at Enterprise Knowledge, where I am the principal consultant in the advanced content practice. What exactly is content audit and then why is it different than a knowledge audit right because you right. Kind of mentioned some internal knowledge pieces um but how do they differ so let's start right. with what is it and then how do they differ sure um and i you know and i don't think there's a lot of difference in a way between auditing you know what you, you uh refer to as knowledge auditing versus content auditing i mean because mm -hmm. knowledge is expressed in content right Yep. And so if you kind of go up a level and say, again, kind of what is it this content needs to do? What purpose does this need to fulfill both for a business and for whoever is the consumer of that content? So, you know, the content is how you're capturing, distributing, you know, that that information, whether it's, uh, you know, internal training or whether it's, you know, marketing content. Um, so, you know, understanding and the, the part of doing an audit is, you know, kind of understanding the purpose who the audience is, you know, how, whether or whether or not, or how well it's supporting those tasks. And so an audit is, you know, a very tactical process, but I think it needs to be sort of grounded in um, a, a more sort of strategic uh, foundation of understanding, again, understanding who you are as a business, how you want to communicate, what you need to communicate, who you're communicating to, what they need, um, and, and how you measure all of this stuff, because it does need to kind of bring in some aspect of, you know, sort of that measurement or quality, quantitative piece along with the qualitative. So, you know, when I start an audit or in the way I talk about um, doing an audit is really spending time up front, like immersing yourself in all of that, you know, all of that information you can gather about, about the business and about the, the audiences, the users. Um, so that when you actually start a process, you know what you're looking for. Um, and, you know, the biggest challenge, you know, when you're starting an, aud an audit is making sure up front that, um, that you know what questions you're answering. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's because what an audit is, is literally, you know, quite often going through a set of content sort of asset or page by page by page and evaluating it against a set of criteria that you've mm -hmm. determined, you know, you need to understand what questions you're answering. Um, because that's going to tell you, it's going to tell you what questions you need to ask, you know, so what do we need to ask about this content? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is it related to something that's that's, uh, you know, a brand or an editorial or kind of uh, voice and tone, you know, those kinds of things on one end of it to the end of, you know, is it actually providing the correct and complete instructions for, you know, uh, you know, installing your new, <laughs> your new television or whatever yeah. it might be, right? Yeah. Um, so understanding that context, understanding what questions you need to answer, then tells you what questions you need to ask. Uh, because you can easily get sort of overwhelmed if you're just sort of looking at a big, you know, usually, you know, typically it's a big spreadsheet of, con of you know, lists of, of pages and you start to just go through this. So you need to understand up front kind of what outcome are you trying to get to? Yeah. And if you know what that is, it helps you sort of plan and do it in a more efficient way. Yeah. Um, and make sure that you're getting the data that you need to actually answer those questions. And then obviously make some meaningful uh, decisions mm -hmm. based on on what you've learned during that process. And, you know, whether that is 
you know, that you need to create new content or that you need to improve your existing content or mm -hmm. that you need to reduce the amount of content you have. Um, or you need to focus more or less on specific audiences or whatever. These are all of the, you know, potential. I mean, there are many, many, obviously, potential yeah. decisions you could make once you kind of really understand what you have to work with. You know, as sort of a rule of thumb, you know, spending, you know, spending, if not as much time up front preparing for it as doing mm -hmm. it, it should be somewhat equivalent just because, <laughs> you know, as you're saying, if, if you are, you know, if for whatever reason, and, you know, if someone has sort of said, we need to audit our content, you know, actually the first question you need to ask is sort of why, you know, what <laughs> is it, you know, I'm not disagreeing, you probably do, but what's, what are you, what mm -hmm. are you trying to get out of this? You know, what are you trying to do? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's kind of the first question is sort of what is triggering this? And, you know, that could be a, you know, uh, you're rebranding or you are migrating onto, you know, into a different content management system or you've, you know, doing any number of sort of content initiatives or you realize you need to just make some general sort of clean up and improve on the content or whatever. But if at that, uh, you know, that sort of whatever sort of triggered that, if you at that point really can't say, you know, here are business objectives, and here are, are our audiences mm -hmm. and what we what we know about them. And you know, ideally that's that's looking at um, any customer research you have, if you have things like personas, if you have customer journeys, mm -hmm. if you have analytics, you know, I mean, obviously you want to see what is what are people actually engaging with. So you want to kind of build that picture up front, you know, of who you're actually speaking to. And then that can become one of your audit criteria mm -hmm. is, you know, whether or not, you know, first of all, whether you can identify the audience for a piece of content. And then secondly, whether it whether it actually does what you want to do mm -hmm. for that audience. So the upfront work, you know, might be it might take, you know, weeks, months, potentially, you know, to sort of develop if you don't have the research if mm -hmm. you know, and need to do it um, or if you need to synthesize what you do have and kind of get everyone kind of into a room and, you know, go through a workshop or something yeah. where you you kind of map out, like, here's, you know, here are our audiences, here's what they need, here's what we know about them, here's what we yeah. know about how happy or unhappy they are now. That's one thing. And then, and then kind of on the, the flip side of it, the other side of it is like, here are our goals, you know, mm -hmm. here are the things we measure ourselves on as a business, and whether that's sales or or, uh, you know, engagement, you know, if it's if it's something like a, you know, a, a blog or something, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what are what are the things we measure ourselves on? And what would tell us if we have met those those metrics, you know, and sometimes that might be something like we can track back that, you know, this many, this many people, you know, hit the buy button or something. That's one yeah. thing. But if but if, you know, you're working through a customer journey, and you say, you know, we want, uh, you know, at, at this stage of a customer journey, they really need to understand um, our product, you know, so that they will take that next step, yeah. you know, so it may not be, you know, I mean, you, you have to sort of work back from and say, if we want this outcome, if we want them to get to this end point, what's going to get them there, mm -hmm. and look at the stuff all along the way. Yeah, and I, I, I love how you're framing that up, too, because again, in some past lives, I know some people were just like, you know what, we need to have auto generated FAQs for, you know, <laughs> na name your thing that was being sold. And they wanted to do it. It was it was a brainchild of uh, a data science team. And they wanted to do it just to see if they could. Mm. And then five years later, <laughs> um, a, a person I was I was talking to said that it was um, it, it had turned into a zombie, meaning it was still on their, <laughs> on their site. It still was generating things and, but nobody was really, and it did have analytics on it, but it was just such a low level of effort that the, the thing was just running and they just let it go. Yeah. But yeah. they never looked at just because folks are interacting with it doesn't mean that it's not doing an alternative or, or. Um, a negative effect on, yeah, exactly. on what they're doing. Yeah. So you just let it, yeah. you know, yeah. become a zombie, as they said. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and that too, 
another part of, you know, of auditing and, and the role that it plays in governance, right? You know, audits are a big part of content governance as well. Yeah. So there is, you know, there is the, you know, let's let's clean stuff up. But part of part of doing an audit, and and again, you know, what I've seen happen. Um, is in those sort of planning pages when you're looking at a, at a big list of content and working, you know, for example, working with with a client. Um, and uh, one of one of the sort of key things to uh, determine is who owns the content, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And quite often you have things like your zombie example where someone at some point put something up on the on the site or developed, you know, some app and that person's gone, no one's mm-hmm. monitoring that anymore, you know, no one's taking care of it. And so, you know, finding and having sort of accountability for for content, you know, mm-hmm. is a good sort of outcome of an audit, because you do want to, you know, make sure that, you know, you're thinking about this as part of the whole life cycle of, of content, right, that yeah. there is, you know, there's, there's always a lot of energy around developing and publishing stuff, you know, people don't necessarily want to go back and, you know, look at it later, you know, and, mm-hmm. and say, you know, oh, that's still out there. I mean, it's, I, I don't think I've ever done an audit where a client wasn't surprised by something mm-hmm. still being, still being live and still being out there. Yeah. Um, so just sort of finding, you know, finding owners for things, you know, and, and developing some sort of ongoing governance model Mm -hmm. where content gets reviewed Mm -hmm. regularly and you don't have these sort of zombie pages or Mm -hmm. FAQs or whatever out there, um, you know, is another, is another good reason, you know, we call them a rolling, it's called a rolling audit essentially, Mm -hmm. you know, which is like on some regular basis, you know, and it depends on what kind of content it is, depends on how frequently it changes and stuff like that, but whether it's, you know, quarterly or yearly or whatever, someone is looking at that stuff Mm -hmm. and saying, yes, this is still good. Um, And yes, it still should be out there or, uh, you know, this needs to come down or it needs to be updated or whatever. Well, and Paula, one thing I'm curious to know your take on is, you know, on that topic of ownership. Um, I've worked for quite a few, uh, folks in my past that were aggregators of content mm-hmm. they didn't make it themselves and so they were right. kind of on the hook <laughs> for you know auditing and you know what the quality of things looked like and and all of that but they ultimately didn't have uh the final call as to what happened with that content how do you address things like that in an, in an audit situation and you know even if it's internal data you the, the, the group doing the audit might not own some of that content. So how do you work with others that own the content? I think I would still go back to, you know, what I said before about like the purpose of it. And so whether or not you're the, the person who created it, you know, you've, you've aggregated it for some reason, right? Um, and so, you know, again, if you can't articulate what that reason is, or you can't figure out how to how to how to measure that or manage it over time, then that's, you know, then that's an issue, right? But, you know, in the same way that if, you know, if you have created that collection of content for a specific purpose, and you are watching, uh, you know, the data to see if it's, you know, if it's being used, if you have any sort of feedback on it, you know, that's telling you that it's, that it's, you know, people are reacting positively or negatively or whatever, then, then you take whatever, you know, and whatever action you can take about it. But, but it always comes back to, to me, it's sort of like, if, if you can't define, you know, why something is there, then you can't measure it. You know, it's sort of like, it's the same thing. If you can't find an owner for something, you know, you can almost be guaranteed that it's not being <laughs> yeah. really monitored. If it's valuable, you know? someone wants to own it, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what are some of the other hurdles or or things that, you know, folks should watch out for um, while doing content audits or, you know, if they're starting to think about doing a content, content audit? I think, you know, in the same way that I talk about, you know, spending this time up front to like think through why you're doing it and questions you need to answer and how you're going to do it and finding out the process. If you don't have people on board with what you're going to do with the outcome of the process, that's not good. Um, And I have seen that happen 
you know, more than once uh, where, you know, I, there's, there's a lot of enthusiasm or, you know, somehow you get people, you know, working on an audit, you've done all this work, you get, you know, you come out of it at the end of it with this, with this, ideally this list of, you know, recommendations and, you know, improvements or changes or whatever. But if no one is actually prepared to act on those, then, then you've wasted your time, right? Mm -hmm. So in the same way that you want to get all your sort of stakeholders on board up front, part of that is telling them, when we get to the end of this process, we're going to come back and, you know, we may have asked you for time and resources to do this audit. Now we're going to be asking you for time and resources to act on it. You know, so we may need people who can rewrite content or we may need, you know, to make changes to our, you know, templates and the CMS or whatever comes out of it, right? That if you're not prepared to make use of the information, then it's then it's not a good use of time to have mm -hmm. done all of this mm -hmm. information gathering. And so there is this kind of organizational readiness piece of it mm -hmm. that I've come to think, and I actually emphasize this more in this edition of the book because I had seen, you know, in the intervening years between when the first edition came out in 2014 to when the second edition came out last year, you know, as I had done, you know, whatever, almost 10 more years of audits, seeing how important that people mm -hmm. part, part of mm -hmm. it was, you know, the process, the process is, the, the process is a process, yeah. <laughs> and there are tools that can help. Um, but the people part of it is, is actually the hardest part of an yeah. audit. And that is, that is getting people on board up front, you know, getting them on board at the end of it, but then in the middle, I mean, and during the process, um, the if you are working with other people while you're doing it, it's absolutely critical that everybody understands what how how you are doing it. Sort of, you know, mm -hmm. so part of doing an audit is selecting what the criteria are that you're going to measure the content by, right? Or you're going to evaluate content mm -hmm. by. If everyone does not have the same definition mm -hmm. of what those things mean or don't really have a shared understanding of, you know, if we're going to say something is, you know, good, fair, poor, or, mm -hmm. you know, bronze, silver, gold, or whatever you want, whatever rubric you're going mm -hmm. to sort of measure things by. If you don't have a shared understanding of, you know, what is the cutoff between, you know, poor and fair, you know, what specifically would tell us that this pushes this into the, into another category or whatever, yeah. then you can get like really inconsistent rankings yeah. Yeah. and and then you're kind of you either then are going back and saying what did you mean by this or is this really you know I don't agree yeah. you know and and that's only a problem if you're doing if you're doing this uh with other people you know if you're mm -hmm. if you're mm -hmm. solo and doing it on your own of course you've got your own mental models and you know how things work but you still need to be able to communicate that to yeah. to the you know the stakeholders whoever you're sort mm -hmm. of handing this off to so you do need to be incredibly thoughtful and sort of crisp in how you how you select what you're going to look at, how you define it, how you measure it, and then how you're going to communicate that out. And so those are all pieces that are, you know, not not about sitting and looking at a web page and saying, you know, this is, you know, and the, this is written for the wrong audience. I mean, that's that's the audit process. But all of this other stuff, you know, is kind of surrounds that process yeah. Yeah. you know so an audit isn't just looking at just looking at content and making a yeah this is fine you know it is how am I going to communicate this what are the, what what is that going to mean in the you know in the short term and the longer term and are there you know another common output for example is realizing we don't have a style guide or, you know, <laughs> clearly all of our authors are not, are not, you know, uh, working from the same style guide yeah. or whatever. Right. So yeah. feeding back what you learn into, into your tools, you know, are there updates you need to make to tools or changes you need to make to any, any of the ways that you're authoring or publishing content or measuring it? Um, are there <clears throat> changes you need to make to, you know, to your documentation or, uh, training, um, style guides, all of that kind of stuff, you know, can also come out of this. So there's, it, it kind of is part of this whole picture of like content governance writ large and, you know, just sort of how you, how you 
manage this stuff. Yeah, a lot, a lot of what cycle. you're saying is is resonating in, with me too, because I think there's some parallels in, you know, the um, taxonomy and even indexing uh, mm. or cat- categorization space where, um, you know, I, I remember there's a video on my channel where I'm talking about, great, you have a knowledge graph. Now what? <laughs> right. Yeah, the whole yeah. point is you need to have some buy-in at some point. And I mean, there's one thing like spinning up something just so people can get a feel of what does a content audit look like? Or in my case with that video was, you know, what does an ontology look like? And then how do you populate it with data to be meaningful? But then you have to have that buy-in to then take action on it, or you've just mm-hmm. wasted a lot of time. Right. And right. then, you know, the other thing on the indexer side of things um, and taxonomy, I wonder if you've ever come across this, but um, there's a lot of folks that have told me that it's an it's an art. Again, I've I've done that work, right? So I know how it works. I've done it. I do know that there is there is an art to it in, in, a, in a certain way, but then there's consistency issues, right? And yeah. and that's where, you know, as as much as I have heard folks say, well, we need to have the same standards across the board on how to do something. There's a great study that was done on inter-indexer agreement. And Hmm. chances are two out of three indexers will not agree on what that thing should be tagged with. (laughs) So as much as you want to standardize, it doesn't talk. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's exactly I mean it's that's exactly what I was saying to yeah, about, you know, two two people looking at the same piece of content might have a very different opinion of it. 